Moody was an 18-year-old African-American studying for a nursing degree, and through social media, a few months prior to her disappearance, she met a Detroit woman named Brittany Gurley. The two quickly became close. Jasmine's mother says the relationship was platonic, but Brittany has not confirmed this or if it was actually romantic. Jasmine Moody was last seen at about 7.30 p.m. on December the 4th, 2014, leaving her friend Brittany Gurley's home in the 3700th block of Baldwin Street in the Vic Van Dyke and Mack area of Detroit, Michigan. Jasmine and Brittany get into an argument about Jasmine's social media posts. Brittany and her family would later tell investigators that Jasmine put on a hoodie and walked out of the house. Jasmine is a freshman honor roll student at Texas Women's University and flew to Detroit, Michigan on November the 25th, 2014 to visit her friend while on school break for the Thanksgiving holiday. I thought she went for a walk. I went for a walk to grab a cigarette and came back, but Jasmine didn't, her friend Brittany Gurley told the Detroit News. I didn't know, I don't know anything. I went searching myself and came up with literally nothing, she said. Brittany told her family and they went looking for Jasmine 15 minutes after she left their home. She wasn't found. After searching the area, they reported her missing to the Detroit Police Department. Detroit Police Officer Mike Pakalis led the investigation into Jasmine's disappearance. He immediately noticed something strange. I found her cell phone, ID, jacket, purse, and all her personal belongings inside Brittany's house. It's definitely not normal, he said, for a 19-year-old girl to walk away from those things. And in that weather, the jacket being left behind was particularly concerning. With the wind chill, it was probably below zero that night and there was snow on the ground, Officer Pakalis said. So she was not dressed for the conditions. A search of the girly residence didn't uncover any significant evidence of her whereabouts. It is also reported that following her friend's disappearance, Brittany Gurley was hospitalized for anxiety and other issues. Despite conducting ground searches of the area surrounding the house where Jasmine was last seen, police were unable to find any physical evidence leading to Jasmine's whereabouts. Des desperate for her leads after nine months of searching, Jasmine's mother and stepfather hired a private investigator, Scott Lewis, to work on with the Detroit Police Department on the case. She disappeared in quite a dangerous neighborhood that she didn't know, Lewis told the news. It's not beyond the realm of possibilities that she was kidnapped. Private investigator Lewis joined the police in their continued efforts, leading the community in ground searches for Jasmine. Despite conducting countless interviews and searches using cadaver dogs, they still have been unable to uncover any solid leads. It's very troubling to me, and these missing people cases are very heartbroken, Lewis said. The answer is somewhere in that neighborhood. It was a December night. It was cold outside, approximately 7.30 at night. Jasmine left the home with no tablet, no cell phone, no money, no credit card, dressed in a sweatshirt, and she's never been seen again. As her research efforts continue, Jasmine's stepfather fears the worst. I don't believe that she just left the porch and walked away, Patrick told the news. In my heart, he said, I feel like she's dead. If somebody had her and she would have been able to get away and got a phone to call us, so I don't think she's out there. Jasmine was ahead of her time and she lit up every room. Every moment was good with her. She was a well-rounded student. She had straight A's, danced, and was training to be a part of the U.S. Armed Forces through her school's ROTC program during her first semester. Jasmine was making new friends both on and off campus, her stepfather Patrick said. My daughter was real popular. She had a lot of friends. She was very social and very energetic. She always had a smile on her face. Always, always, her mom said. Most high school kids don't know what they want to do when they grow up or be. That was not the case with Jasmine. By the time she was 16, she knew she wanted to be a nurse. She was a real stable young lady, and it hurts as if it happened yesterday because I don't have any closure, Jasmine's mother said. It was the type of... If, it, if Jasmine was the type to run away or disappear from time to time, I might not be as worried as I am right now, but that doesn't describe her at all, she says. So with that being said, it is suspicious to me. She said, 
Days pass, months, now years. For a mother, desperate to know what happened to her daughter, this is just not right. I know something is just not right, Lisa said. Jasmine's phone, laptop, and everything she had with her was found at the home of Brittany. Jasmine would go nowhere without her phone, said Lisa, which is Jasmine's mom. It was now been years without her. It's now been years without hearing her daughter's voice. It just hurts me to know somewhere out there, someone knows something and people can be so cruel and sleep at night and know someone is hurting over their loved one, not knowing where they are. I know something has happened to her. Somebody knows, somebody did something. Her mother knows something. This has gone on way too long, her mother adds. And when I was able to speak with Brittany's mother, it sounded as though the story was rehearsed. Moody's mother had a bad feeling about her daughter going to Detroit. Her mother had discouraged her from traveling to Detroit, telling her daughter that she had a bad feeling. And Jasmine responded, Mom, you're so dramatic. According to family, Moody would knew no one else in Detroit and would have felt uncomfortable alone, so she would not have left on foot. Her mother describes a very close relationship with her daughter and having a very disturbing experience the night that Jasmine vanished. While sleeping the night of December the 4th, Lisa suddenly awoke and heard her daughter's voice say, Help me, Mama. The following day, she couldn't dismiss the feeling and arrived at work with tears in her eyes. She called her daughter's phone, no answer. Lisa describes that day turning into a continuous nightmare and it has turned her life, entire life upside down. Moody disappeared the night before she was supposed to take a bus back to Texas. Moody was scheduled to return to Texas on December the 5th, 2014. She has not returned to Texas and Jasmine has not been seen or heard from since. Her family stated it's uncharacteristic of her to be out of touch with them or leave without warning, and they believe foul play could have been involved in her case. She was unfamiliar with the neighborhood and it was a high crime area. It's possible she was abducted. Uh, but her family doesn't believe this. Her family thinks that the girly family knows more about Jasmine's disappearance than they have disclosed. The Black and Missing Foundation works with the family of the missing media and law enforcement nationwide to ensure equal attention and resources are available to every Black missing adult and child. This nonprofit organization has become well known for addressing the disappearance proportionate amount of media attention and cited in hundreds of articles throughout the United States. Jasmine Sheree Moody was born on January the 1st, 1996, and is an African-American female with black hair and brown eyes. She is 5 feet 2 inches tall and weighed approximately 130 pounds. Her nose and tongue are pierced, and she has a tattoo of a white jasmine flower on her abdomen. She was last seen wearing a white hooded sweatshirt with the University of Texas Women's College in burgundy lettering on the front. She had blue jeans on and brown boots. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of Jasmine Moody is asked to contact the Detroit Police Department's Criminal Investigations at 313-596-5752 or Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. There is a $2,500 reward offered for information leading to the whereabouts of Jasmine Moody and the prosecution of anyone involved of her disappearance.